of mine, the ruins and the blood, I've seen the dying of all, this is
is a place that I know. Follow me and I'll show you the way where you can feel the warm glow of sunshine and the few small drops of rain. Let 
me tell you you're the only one I really love the best And you don't have to worry about any of the rest Cause everything's fine right now
water is wide, I cannot cross over, and neither have I wings to fly. Bring me a boat that will carry two, and both shall I lean my back against an oak, thinking it was a mighty tree. But first it bended, and then it broke, and so did my love prove false to me. There is a ship, she sails the sea, she's loaded deep, as deep can be, but not so deep as the love I'm in, I know not if I sink or Love is handsome and love is kind, gay as a jewel when first it's new. But love grows old, the length grows cold and faints away like the Neither have I wings to fly. Bring me a boat that will carry two, and both shall row. start off this session now with a little fairy story that concerns <laughs> that concerns a vicar and a little frog Well, there once was a very, very holy vicar was a walking along the street one day when he heard a little voice say, Hello, Vicar. Excuse me, Vicar. The voice did say. <laughs> and the Vicar looked around, and all he could see was a tiny frog sitting on the ground. My dear little froggy, did you speak to me? Was it you who spoke when I heard that sound? Oh, yes, said the frog. Please help me, Vicar. For I'm not really a frog, you see. I'm a choir boy, really, but a wicked fairy. Cuss a nasty spell on me. <laughs> and the only way I can be saved from that evil spell, the little frog said, 
Whisper someone to take me and put me in a place where a holy man has laid his head. So the vicar took him home and he put him on his pillow and there he lay till the break of day. And the very next morning, the blessed miracle, the spell was broken, I'm glad to say. And there was a choir boy in bed with a vicar, and I hope you think that this all makes sense. <laughs> for there, my lord, and the members of the jury rest the case for the defense. <laughs> story uh, sounds to me rather unlikely as to its authenticity. No answer to that. Um, it concerns a certain artist who shall remain nameless at this stage, who was on a tour up north and he happened to stay in this boarding house which had a landlady and three gorgeous, beautiful young daughters. And... <laughs> and this is what is, what is supposed to have happened on the last night of his stay there. It's simply called a lodger. <laughs> My landlady had three lovely daughters they used to come and make my bed each day. They used to come and clean my living quarters. But their mother made quite sure they didn't stay. There was Mary Puss in Cherry. There was Helen, who was well and truly skeptical about my qualities. There was Julie, who was truly well proportioned, but a caution brought exhaustion to my aching arteries. <laughs> that they weren't at all impervious to the possibilities of high romance. And I sensed a certain girlish nervousness in the way they folded my pyjama pants. <laughs> and I was all right for late one night, sweet little Mary, like a fairy as I lay sleeping, came a creeping to my side. She was mine, it was divine, but we were doomed. For very soon into the room came Sister Helen, and she cried. Mary got to bed, off Mary went. Now, young man, Helen said, for your punishment, you won't forget tonight. I promise and I vow, turn off that light. It's my turn now. <laughs> well, after all, I'm young and relatively vigorous. Though I still protest my innocence. My temperament, I'm strictly unpolygamous. And if I send, I send in self-defense. <laughs> <laughs> Nevertheless, I must confess, I wouldn't miss that sort of glisten when it ended. I was rendered comatose. Then loud and clear, very near in my ear, a loud voice spoke, and I was awoken from my post of coital doors. Helen, go to bed. Helen went away. Now, young man, Julie said, you will have to pay. You blighted Helen's charms, filched her purity. Who oh, bore a bother was arms? Come and filch me. <laughs> <laughs> While I was amazed and really rather knacker tired. I thought I'd given all that I could give. A little kip was all that I desired. But I'm pretty sure my upper lip was stiff. She was exotic, idiotic, quite chaotic, and ecstatic, acrobatic, and emphatically blind. All to no good for when I could open my eyes. To my surprise, I found her mother looking into my room. <laughs> Thank you.
Julie go to bed. Julie left the sea. Now listen, Ma, I said, I know the old routine. I'll do what you like, but I shall be vexed, and I'll bloody well go on strike. With Grandma's next. <laughs> This is a song about the 1765 equivalent of the 1976 rent-a-killed guy, and this man used to be called a mole catcher. <laughs> <laughs> and he used to go around the country catching little moles and rodents by the short by the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like whatever attributes that he could grab hold of when he was there, so to speak. Um, unfortunately for this man, although he had a beautiful young wife. Um, she found it uh, more enjoyable to um, make the acquaintance of a very much younger and more handsome fellow. And so, of course, this is the story of what happens in the confrontation uh, when the three of them meet up for the first time. The action starts to happen round about verse 6, uh, and it continues on for another 24, but don't worry. <laughs> and I'm sure that this man must have been the first bionic person there when you visit <laughs> Mole catcher. Uh, In Wellington town, at the sign of the plow, there lived a mole catcher. Shall I tell you it was me to rely day? Fall de lie laddie, lie laddie, die day. He go a mole catching from morn until night, and the young fella came for to play with his wife with me to be loyed and Faldy Lai Laddy Lai Laddy Dai Day. The mole catcher jealous of this very same thing. He hid in the wash house to see him come in with me to be loyed and Faldy Lai Laddy Lai Laddy Dai Day. He knocked on the door and the seat inside. Where is your husband, good woman? I pray with me to be loyed and fall the lie, laddie, lie, laddie, lie, day. He's got the mole catch and you need never fear. But little did she think the mole catch was near with me to be loyed and fall the lie, laddie, lie, laddie, lie, day. She went up the stairs and she gave him the sign, but the mole cat followed them quickly behind with me to be lied day. Oh, the lie, laddie, lie, laddie, lie, day. And while the young fellow was up to his frolics, the mole cat chicored him quite fast by his shirt with me to Oh, the lie, laddie, lie, laddie, lie, day. Rabbit squeezed tighter, which caused him to smile. Say, here's the best mole that I've caught in a while. With me too, will I die? Fall the lie, laddie, lie, laddie, die, die. I'll make you fight dearly for tilling my ground. And the money it'll cost you no know, less than ten pound. With me too, will I die? Fall the lie, laddie, lie, laddie, die, die. Ten pounds, says the young fellow, that I don't mind, cause he don't need works in the mail, top and surprise with me to be So come all you young fellows and mind what you're at, and don't get them caught in the mole car, just trap with me to be lonely as a cloud that floats so high o'er fields and banks. I trod upon a man's bare bum and heard a woman's voice say thanks. <laughs> Just thought I'd throw it in. 
This next song is a symbolic song. <laughs> it's called A Vegetable Marrow, and the reason that it's called symbolic is because uh, some people may not think that it is about a vegetable marrow, you see. And the reason for the word symbolic, it comes from two Greek words. <laughs> There's sim, which is a sort of Chinese rice cake that they used to throw at nuns on Shrove Tuesday in southern Persia. <laughs> and uh, the other half of the word meant much the same in Greek as it does in English. So, <laughs> So I'd like to continue now with a song called The Marrow. It's also got a chorus that you may join in. It goes, oh, what a beauty. I've never seen one as big as that before. <laughs> oh, what a beauty. It's sure to be two foot long or even more. Last year I grew a vegetable marrow to exhibit at an agricultural show. I tended it and fed it with manure until at last the thing began to grow. The neighbors came from miles about to see and this is what they said to me. Oh, what a beauty! I've never seen one as big as that before. Oh, what a beauty. It's sure to be two foot long or even more. It's such a lovely color, so big and round and fat. I never knew that one of those could grow as big as that. Oh, what a beauty. I've never seen one as big as that before. A very pretty girl of my acquaintance Says I should like to see it if I may I said, me dear, I usually keep it covered So I took her to the greenhouse straight away It's a wooden greenhouse I kissed her for I knew no one could see And she whispered as she sat down upon my knee See one as big as that before. Oh, what a beauty! It should have been two foot long or even more. Its texture's just like velvet, and I love its streamlined form. I'm sure it will grow longer if we keep it nice and warm. Oh, what a beauty! I've never seen one as big as that before. Well, I took it to the show, the judges loved it. <laughs> Especially a dowager named Flo. She prodded it and poked it with her finger. I never thought she'd ever let it go. <laughs> she took me to her mansion for some tea. <laughs> and she said that we sat down on her, said he. <laughs> Oh, what a beauty! I've never seen one as big as that before. Oh my God! Oh, what a beauty! It's sure to be two foot long or even more. Those lines down either side they give it added emphasis. It's years since I've been as close to one as big as. <laughs> I took it to the showground in the evening to expose it in the day I didn't dare. <laughs> Down the road I met a pretty police woman. She says, me dear, what is it you got there? <laughs> when I showed her, she said, what a lovely thing. <laughs> and with a blast upon her whistle began to see. <laughs> Two foot long or even more. 
It's got a perfect finish, not a single scratch or dent. I think I'll have to pinch it for loitering with intent. <laughs> what a beauty! I've never seen one as big as that before. I mean, me marrow, I've never seen one as big as that before. It's covered in ocean mark! <laughs> I've never seen one as big as that before. song about a very unusual nun <laughs> who lived in a very unusual monastery guy nunnery convent. <laughs> lived in a very unusual convent the name of the nun is sister Josephine here we go take five is that all right Bernard you'll kill me for this it's ten pounds an inch <laughs> I'll rephrase that. <laughs> Keep that on. <laughs> oh, Sister Josephine, what do all these policemen mean by coming to the convent in a grim limousine after Sister Josephine? Well, you, Sister Josephine, you sit with your boots up on the altar screen, smoking one last cigar. What a funny nun you are. The policemen say that Josephine's a burglar in disguise, big bad Desmond, 15 years on the run. The sisters disbelieve it, no, that can't be Josephine. Just think about her tenderness towards the younger nuns. Whoa, sister Josephine. The searching the chapel where you've been seen The nooks and crannies of the nuns' canteen After Sister Josephine Well, you, Sister Josephine You take a farewell sip of Benedictine Before your au revoir A right funny nun you are Admittedly, her hands are big and hairy And embellished with a curious tattoo Admittedly, her voice is on the deep side and she seems to shame more often than the other sisters do. <laughs> oh, Sister Josephine, policemen's noses are extremely keen and they're following the scent of nicotine after Sister Josephine. Well, you, Sister Josephine, you give a farewell sniff of benzene to the convent butchery car. A right funny nun you are. No longer will her snores ring through the chapel during prayers. <laughs> no her lustful moanings fill the chilly night. <laughs> no more empty bottles of altar wine come clunking from her cell. No longer will the cloister toilet seat stand upright. <laughs> oh, Sister Jones of Fiend, sprinting through the suburbs when last seen, dressed only in your wimple and your rosary. All right, thinking on you seem to be. thermometer in your dog pocket. So it is, Janice, some bum has had my bio. This is a very cultural um, record that we're doing here. And so I'd like to um, continue with a, a 1976 version of 
record that came out in the 50s, and it was made by a man called Mr. Wink Martindale. And the, <laughs> the actual thing itself was called the Deck of Cards, and this is the 1976 version of the Deck of Cards. It's a really fantastic thing. <laughs> One day during the North Africa campaign of 1943, <laughs> a group of soldier boys were walking by. <laughs> On the day being the Sabbath day, they went into the chapel to pray. And one car took out his privates. in front of him. <laughs> and the sergeant major who was walking past at the time, he saw what the young soldier boy was doing. <laughs> and he went over to the young soldier boy and he put his hand on his shoulder and he said to the young soldier boy, <laughs> Ooh, snap. <laughs> number brought me to my penultimate number and the word penultimate comes from an old Latin word penis which means if I make a cock up of this one I've got one more to go <laughs> every artist has a dream booking. Some artists would simply love to go and play the Royal Albert Hall on a Wednesday night. Oh no, not Wednesday, that's wrestling. <laughs> uh, my ambition doesn't go to any of those lengths at all. It's all summed up in three words. The nudist colony. <laughs> I've played in pubs, I've played in clubs, in sleazy nightclubs too. It gives me much delight to play this evening here for you. But of all the different venues where I most prefer to be is playing for a wedding at a nudist colony. The first time I arrived, just as the ceremony began, it's nice to eye the bride up and admire her deep suntan. And it is very hard to tell which fellow is best man when you're playing at a nudist colony. When you're playing at a nudist colony. The bride had lovely ankles, shapely legs and perfect waist. Her figure, it was faultless, but I can't recall her face. Her outfit was white sandals, a 30 bob a pair. And a local gynecologist had washed and set her hair. <laughs> The groom proposed a toast and everyone was most impressed. He was very tall and handsome and exceedingly well blessed. <laughs> he said, be up standing for the bride. That outstood all the rest. <laughs> Two gentlemen had argued who should give the bride away. They couldn't reach agreement, though they'd argued all that day. Which just confirms my theory that a nudist colony is the perfect place for boys and girls to air their differences. <laughs> the bride.
bridesmaid had a figure, 40, 24, 32. She brought me hors d'oeuvres on a plate the way the bridesmaids do. She said, would you like a nibble? Because I've saved these just for you. <laughs> I was playing at a new discovery. The dance band played a rumba, the beat was really spicy. The pianist bounced up and down, I think his tool... The pianist bounced up and down, I think his stool was icy. <laughs> Soon everyone was dancing, I could not resist a peek. The room was full and everybody danced round cheek to cheek. <laughs> When it was time for me to play, the dance band took a pause. The men set out some rows of wooden chairs and closed the doors. And when they all sat down, it sounded just like loud applause. <laughs> I was playing at a new discovery. I was playing at a new discovery. They said it was the custom for the artist to sing nude. When I heard I had to strip my shit out guarded road. I finally undressed, but not without much grumbling. The bride said, what a fuss, Jeff, over such a little thing. <laughs> the folks enjoyed my singing, for I really played my best. The bridegroom says, I've seen you on TV, but I confess, there's nothing quite like seeing you performing in the flesh. I was playing at a nudist colony, the first time was the hardest. I was playing at a nudist colony. I'll continue with a song written by Mr. Jake Thackeray with regard to... No, that's later on, madam. But, uh, it's later on, madam. Um, it's all about uh, a Randy Bird, and I hasten to add... I hasten to add that it's um, a Randy Bird of the feather variety. And the subject of the song concerns a bantam cock, and this particular bantam cock if it met a, an animal of the opposite sex with feathers on, the other one had had it, or at least if it hadn't had it by the time it had met it, by the time it had met it, it had had it. <laughs> oh, it. So here we go with a song called The Bantam Cock. was a grand upstanding phantom cock so brisk and stiff and spry with springy step and jaunty bloom and a purposeful look in his eye in his little black blinky eye I took him to the coop and introduced him to my seventeen wide-eyed hens he topped and he topped as a hero topped and he bowed from the waist to them all and then he upped and he topped them all again <laughs> He jumped by giggling guinea fowl and thrust his attentions upon my twenty hysterical turkeys and a visiting migrant swan. Hard luck, and the bantam thundered on. He ravished my fantail pigeons, my lily white columbine, and while I was locking up a butchery gar, he jumped my banner from behind. He was sitting on my shoulder at the time. <laughs> and then all of a sudden with a gasp and a gulp, he clasped his hands to his head. He fell flat on his back with his toes in the air. My bantam cock lay dead. And the vultures circled overhead. What a noble bird, what a champion cock, what a way to live and to die. And while digging him a grave to save his bones from the hungry buzzards in the sky, the phantom opened up a sly little eye. <laughs> he gave me a grin and a terrible wink, the way that rapists do. He said, 
You see them big dumb buggers over there? They'll be down in a minute or two. <laughs> <laughs> 